and now they also have other streams also last pass mass okay be careful welcome back guys arun this side and i am excited to start this next daily dba episode with another five i think today we'll have six questions that i would like to answer and trust me guys i am enjoying this show i am enjoying the way you all are sending me the questions every single comment that i get on youtube every single email that i'm getting every single message that i get on my mobile trust me i try to respond as many as i can and most of the simple questions i try to answer right away and some of the important questions which i believe should be part of the show i tend to answer it right on this daily dpa episode that being said guys keep continue to send me your queries on support at dbagenesis.com and i will try to answer all of your queries right that being said let's start our today's show with the first question of the day does sorting happens in database buffer cache or pga in oracle i guess most of the experienced dbas might have guessed the answer by now the sorting actually happens in pga it doesn't happen in database buffer cache so what is the meaning of buffer by the way buffer is memory area right so database buffer cache is the temporary area where oracle keeps the blocks while reading or while writing so let's take you want to write something to the disk so that memory buffer will be kept into the database buffer cache and then it will be written to the disks or the data files right so sorting actually happens inside the pga but the i mean the right question should have been like does it happen in pga or the temp table space now understand this let's take you are trying to sort a very big table so you have a pretty big employee table and you are trying to sort that table so the entire content of that table cannot be fit into pga because pga will be very small right in that case what happens is oracle will use the temporary table space it will perform a little bit of sorting into pga but if that data cannot fit inside pga then it goes into temp table space and inside the temp table space the sorting happens once the sorting is done then the output is given to the user to answer your question does sorting happens in database buffer cache or pga in oracle the answer is pga of course but if the data cannot fit inside the pga then the sorting will be done inside the temp table space that being said let's move on to the next question how to grant select on all tables of a schema to a user now actually this question reminds me of another question that a person sent me a couple of days back and the question was how to disable all the dml commands for a user i'll talk about this question in some time but for the first part like how to grant select on all tables of a schema to a user it's very simple actually what you have to do is there are two methods either you generate sqls for each table that is owned by that particular user that will say something like grant select on hr.employees to scott so you have to generate these kind of statements and then you execute all those statements that is one shot or you can try to use a plsql block that will generate these kind of queries for you automatically and then you can grant the access what i'll do is on our support website we have a article we have an article grammar check so we have an article which states how to grant select on all the tables that are owned by a schema and i'll put on the link or what you can do is go to support.dbagenesis.com in the search bar type grant select all so if you just type this keyword you will get the article which states how you can grant the select all on the tables owned by a schema user very simple straightforward i have documented both the steps one by generating each and every single sql statement the grant statements or the second method is using a plsql block now this question the other question that was asked to me was how to disable all the dml of a user so i think this is a vague question 
it should have been in a different way. So DML means insert update deletes need to be stopped from a particular user. So what do you do? You revoke those permissions. It's very simple. So you actually, there's nothing called as disabling in Oracle. I mean, you can say it, it's technically revoking. So you are revoking some permissions from the user. So rather than saying like how to disable the DML commands for a user, it should be like, how do you revoke those accesses like insert, update, delete accesses from a user? It's pretty straightforward. You just run the revoke commands and you will get all those permissions revoked from the user. Now that being said, let's move on to the next question. What is the difference between Oracle Fusion and Oracle Cloud? So guys, before I answer this question, we need to understand what exactly is Oracle Fusion. Oracle Fusion is actually a combination of best-in-class applications that are owned by Oracle Corporation like Oracle EBS, Oracle Siebel, PeopleSoft, JD Edwards and so on. So all these applications are collectively called as Oracle Fusion. As the time progress, Oracle tend to realize that it is hard to neglect cloud. So what they started to do is all these fusion applications, they started to sell these fusion applications as a service and that is known as Oracle Cloud. So what exactly is software as a service? S-A-A-S, -A -A that is software as a service. Like for example, you have Gmail, okay? So we all use Gmail and while you log into the Gmail, we are not installing a code or anything on our system, right? So the entire Gmail code is somewhere on the Google servers and we just log into the service. So we are using the software as a service. Of course, it's free and we all are using it for free. But if you want to upgrade your account to paid account or you want more storage in Google Drive, then you have to pay them. So that's how it's called a freemium model. I mean, I don't want to get into all that, but to just keep it simple, you are using a software that is placed on someone else's computer. You just connect to it, use it for your services and done. And you also meanwhile pay only for what you use. So generally, most of the times when you sell or when any company sells software as a service, it will be cheaper to the end user when compared to buying the entire product license. For example, for all of us to download and install and set up a Gmail server in our home will be more costly than compared to having a remote access. So we just log into the browser, connect to the server, give our email ID password, done. Right, so we are using software as a service. Now come to Oracle. Even Oracle had the Oracle Fusion applications, the best in class applications, right? So all these best in class applications, rather than people buying these applications one by one, installing in their servers and using, Oracle tried to give, or actually Oracle gives it like that. So Oracle is now giving these applications as a service. So you log into a remote server that is Oracle Cloud. So you log on to Oracle Cloud, you set up your SaaS application, software as a service, you want to use PeopleSoft, you can, you want to use Oracle Apps, you can, you want to use JD Edwards, you can, and so on, right? Siebel also. So what exactly is Oracle Cloud? Oracle Cloud is a combination of your Oracle Fusion applications which are sold as a service. So that is software as a service. You don't need to specifically install those softwares in your environment to use those softwares, right? Now that being said, Oracle Cloud does not have only these fusion applications or software as a service. They are right now also providing platform as a service or infrastructure as a service and so on, database as a service also, right? So they have multiple domains right now, but to talk about Oracle Fusion and Oracle Cloud, you can call Oracle Fusion as a combination of all the best applications that are owned by Oracle. And Oracle Cloud is very simple. So initially what Oracle did is all these Fusion applications, it started to sell all these Fusion applications as a service, that is software as a service. And now they also have other streams also. LAS, PaaS, MAS. Okay, be careful, right? So that being said, <laughs> so that being said, let's move on to the next question. 
all my database scheduler jobs are running one hour earlier what could be the issue very simple it could be an issue with the daylight saving check the daylight saving in your area we here in india we don't have daylight saving so our clocks run normal if you are from us or some other country where you have daylight saving on and off where you change your clock to one hour or you fall back one hour then check those daylight savings in your environment that might be one of the issues i think that's what i can guess or the second one can be check if some new dba who joined your team played around with the database scheduler is that something the issue or check if system admin try to play around with the cron tab sometimes it happens and also check if there is a junior dba who actually went into the cron tab file and before trying to save it because most of the junior dbas have issues with the vi editor so they mistakenly added some garbage character or deleted the schedule somewhere or one character that might happen so just check the cron tab file if you have issues with the jobs that are scheduled via the cron tab if it is dbms scheduler check for the daylight saving issues i think that should help you let's move on can i put password file on the asm my question to you would be why would you want to put password file on the asm because the remote authentication will always happen into oracle home slash dbs location so if you are putting password file into asm how would the remote authentication know where is the password file right so you need to keep it in the location where it is supposed to be kept so keep it under dbs location you can always keep it wherever you want but it will create a challenge while there is a remote authentication so i would not recommend you to keep password file in asm but if this is a interview question i can definitely tell you that you can say yes you can keep it so i have this one question for all the dbas who are listening to this one this let us take this as a dba challenge tell me which file inside the oracle database you cannot keep on asm let me try to keep it simple so you can keep data files into the asm you can keep the control file into the asm you can keep the sp file into the asm you can also keep the archive logs into the asm now i also mentioned that you can also keep the password file in the asm and you can also keep i think read logs into the asm so what is that one file inside the oracle database that you cannot keep inside the oracle asm i would love to see your answers that being said let's move on to the last question of the day i think i've already covered five questions but this one i just thought i'll add it up in the show can i move the expdp dump files while the export is in progress i'm using parallel in the export command this is a very interesting question because what happens is let's take if you are using the parallel option so what parallel option will do is it will create multiple dump files for you in the export directory right so if multiple dump files are being created technically you can actually copy the files in case if you have a space issue on the server and while you copy the files or the dump files onto the other server your export utility will try to generate other parts of the dump file right i have personally faced this scenario once so what you have to be cautious about this trick is very careful do not move the first dump file okay because the first dump file will kind of like contain your export master table details and even though export utility is creating the other parts of the export files it will still go back and write and update the part 1 file so don't move the part 1 but you can happily move the part 2 part 3 or part 4 files onto the other server so to keep it very simple when you are using parallel option with the export utility and you are getting multiple dump files in the output try to keep the first part in the directory don't move it otherwise your export might get corrupted but you can always safely move the second third fourth parts of the exported dump files all right guys that's all i had for today and i am actually excited for one important thing that i want to share with each one of you is we are coming up with the dba genesis training calendar for the next quarter and we have some of the exciting oracle dba trainings that are upcoming i think i'll be sharing this dba calendar with all of you very soon 
Meanwhile, I got so many messages like how students can talk to me directly for their career consultation. It's very simple. Send me an email to support at dbagenesis.com. I will send you a meeting link where you and I can sit together and discuss about your Oracle DBA career. Apart from this guys, keep commenting below these videos and I will see you in the next episode. Hold on. So let's move on to the most exciting part of the show that is the bonus question and the most disappointing thing is today I don't have a bonus question. So I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye.